Hey everyone, it's Nightlight9, and in this video I'm going to go over the new banner along with some of the new updates that have just been released for Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis. We'll go ahead and just check out the notices really quickly. Um, there's been new floors added to the Tower of Cetra, which I still haven't beat floor 70. I haven't even really attempted it in, I don't know, three months maybe. So that's kind of cool, I guess, but probably not a lot of people are really focusing too much on this. A new event, which is great. I will kind of briefly go over the new weapon, which I'm pretty excited about. Summon co-op battles on now. Okay, that's pretty normal. Spring Break campaign. This is kind of cool because, again, we're getting another 120 free draws. So 12 days of 10 draws. That's really cool. And then for five days, the five-star appearance rate is doubled. So this is a really big deal, and you definitely don't want to miss out. Especially, make sure you're logging in to pull from April 29th to May 1st. That's, I don't know, that's pretty cool, I think, and uh, pretty excited because I've gotten a lot of my OB6 weapons, actually, from doing all of these free pulls. So don't sleep on those. There's a conquest campaign with Tower of Cetra, so you will probably want to at least get in here to get these 60 draw tickets. You know, that's, like I said, something that kind of adds up over time. And then other than that, there is the new featured banner. So... Real briefly, we will go into the event and just kind of take a look at the exchange shop. Most notably here, we have this Rune Blade for Cloud, which at OB10, plus 31 magic attack, plus 26 ice potency. I think that's really good. In fact, I think this is the silver lining here uh, for this kind of flood of banners that we've seen. I know, you know, we've gotten, oh, I don't know, roughly six banners in the last eight weeks i think five at least and you know that was coming off the tail of having the event right or the the six month anniversary stuff which had big banners um and then you know just banner 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 and having tifa on not quite back-to-back -back banners but you know one in between right but pretty close makes things really hard to me the silver lining is at least the event weapons for the last month have been really good. They've actually been not just giving us the standard fare, they've actually been giving us our abilities that we can really utilize for sub weapons. So I'm really excited to have this. And, uh, you know, I think that, that that is something to actually give the devs some credit for. Other than that, you have the standard fare here Mithril ingots, draw tickets, Catalyst, four star guaranteed weapon tickets, uh, memories, cloud specific weapon parts, 100 of them. That's quite nice. And everything else that you would hope to find. Uh, so I'm, you know, this is really just another good event to kind of get those parts that you need so that you can kind of upgrade your stuff. So with that, we will move to the banner and kind of go through maybe the, the negative part, right? I, you'll notice here, I do have quite a bit of red crystals. I did make a $60 purchase. And actually, I will show you exactly what I bought. Uh, it was this pack right here so i spent 60 dollars on this because and i will show you here i used 21,000 crystals on the last day of tifa's banner to pull on it and yeah uh, i didn't get it i need i already had two stamps on this card page two thought okay seven pulls i need literally 10 stamps i think that that is pretty doable and i Came up too short. I got one stamp on every single pull but one. I got one, two, and the other ones were all ones. So I was really defeated because that is the second time in a row that I have been going for something on Tifa. And I felt like I got pretty screwed, to be honest with you. Um, I think I think seven pulls should be about ten stamps. Uh, you know, in fact, you know, looking at the numbers, I think I had about an 80% chance of getting there. So I felt pretty defeated, and this time I just caved in, and I said, you know what, I don't care, I'm gonna go buy a pack, because, you know, it's something I can't afford, I just prefer to, I guess, spend my money, you know, on other things, but I really just wanted it, and I wasn't gonna let myself go, because I came all the way there, I wasted 21,000 crystals if I didn't get those two extra stamps, uh, but then I ended up getting it on the next pull, uh, it gave me like three stamps, go figure, right? So that's where I am. But otherwise, if not, you know, I basically would only have these 10K. And then, you know, 
that's where I'd be. So I imagine that a lot of, I mean, free-to-play players, I imagine you're pretty tapped out at this point. Light spinners probably pretty tapped out at this point as well. So we'll kind of take that into consideration when we look at this uh, banner. And I guess first I will just take a look at the outfit and I will say that uh, I really like this outfit. Like, really like this outfit. I don't know. I guess usually the last time I really liked outfits, people were pretty, pretty divided over whether or not they agreed. But man, I, I don't know. Something about this I just think looks really good. Honestly, if there was like a way to just pay like $10 for the cosmetic only without, you know, the actual abilities, I would be all for that. Uh, but uh, that's just a pipe dream. So Feather Style, that's what it's called. Cool name, by the way. And here we're going to see Mega Power Creep again. So I have two kind of thoughts on the Power Creep. One, it sucks for OG players who have been, you know, slowly building up these older, now kind of becoming gradually outdated uh, weapons and gear, but it is good for new players. And I think that's good for the game's health ultimately. So, you know, the game was opened up to Steam players that, you know, maybe didn't play on mobile, I don't know, three months or so, four months after the game's release. And then just like a month or so ago, it was opened up to Southeast Asia players. And you know what? When you're a new player, you don't want to come in and then just like be that far behind permanently. So having the power creep stuff kind of enables new players to get up to speed faster. So I'm I'm okay with it. Uh, however, it, it is also kind of hard sometimes uh, for, you know, people who've played since day one. So we have a new R ability buff debuff extension plus, which is just a flat 60% bonus. Um, yeah, that's to me, uh, it's quite strong. It's quite strong. 60% just in addition to anything else, right off the top, doesn't require anything else, with boost HP, which I think pairs nicely with this. And for those of you who have set Tifa up to be your primary debuffer, buffer, whatever, you know, um, I think she's mostly debuffs, right? That is really good for her. However, for those of you who cannot pull or have to be more efficient, I think right now there's no need for this. This is purely um, convenience. And that is the uh, silver lining for me, is that it's not going to hurt me not to have it. Feather Gloves. This has got a lot going on, but essentially it's, uh, you know, physical non-elemental damage, magic defense decrease, uh, starts at mid, stacks to mid, and then actually all will always be mid. So even at OB10, it's mid to mid, uh, but it also has basically makes her do more water damage, gives her a water damage buff, which I think is the first we've seen of this. We might have one other weapon recently that did something like this. I can't quite remember. Uh, but basically, that starts at um, mid, and then will eventually go up to high at OB6, which is pretty good. Uh, she needs this help because she doesn't really have a lot of big water damage weapons. Um, I know we just had the banner with those gloves that got the water damage. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think this is good, but it's not, I don't know. I think it's more like a whale territory to me. And I don't think that this is going to be, I mean, this right here is really good, but I don't know. I, I kind of feel like, I don't know. I just don't, I have a hard time feeling like it's necessary at the moment. Now, obviously we're, you know, this, we're beginning a lot of water stuff. And I think that Hopefully, they're going to release a new um, summon, and hopefully, it's water-based, because, you know, that's kind of where I feel like this is all heading, uh, but maybe not. I don't know. Uh, just, just That's just purely a guess. So, that's what we've got here. Uh, you know, as far as our abilities, plus 39, I, I'm, that's good. Plus 62 attack, good. So, the R abilities on this weapon are very good. I think this is a perfectly great weapon. It's just that, at the moment... We don't really have that much of a need uh, for the water stuff, which, you know, the game historically likes to throw that at us afterwards. So I expect it coming in the next two weeks. Uh, but you can always wishlist it. So it's not like this, you know, is going to be gone forever. And the feather style, obviously, so far can't be obtained later, but I don't think it's necessary. I think it's purely convenience. It's awesome to have. You know, if you're a dolphin or a whale, yeah, it's great. But 
I don't think that it's necessary. Uh, for Zack, his sword looks really cool. <laughs> the outfit itself, uh, I don't care for it. I kind of hate it. So that's how I feel about that. Glacier Armor is what it's called. Frostblade Arcanum. I guess it's like you get a Frostblade Arcanum and you get a Frostblade Arcanum. At this point, I don't know. I think at least half of the characters have Frostblade Arcanum. I know we've got Aerith, Tifa, Cloud, Sephiroth, and Zack. I might have missed one, but that's at least five. Uh, so, yeah. And then, randomly, it's got buff debuff extension on it. I don't think that's bad. I'm okay with it. Uh, I think this makes this armor really good, to be honest with you. Um, but it's kind of, do you need all those people to have Frostblade Arcanums? It depends, right? Earlier, I talked about maybe people that started playing with Steam or the Southeast Asia players. And yeah, they might not have, you know, had, you know, the, the Tifa one or the Sephiroth one. So this is kind of cool because it still allows even newer players to have access to probably two Frostblade Arcanums. So I'm, I'm good with that. Or if you're just a Zack fan, right? If Zack is one of your main people and you've been waiting on this, that's good for you. Otherwise, you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty, <laughs> pretty topped up on Frostblade Arcanums. And I don't really see the need to have this. Pressure Ridge is the name of the weapon. And again, we've got ice damage uh, maxing out at 620, which is low, but it also does an ice breach. And at OB6, it's high. So we've basically got a weapon that's very similar to Lucia's Bald Eagle. And 40, 12, going up to 6239, which is good. If we take a look at Bald Eagle, you can see here that it's virtually the same, um, except for Bald Eagle here has an ice boost plus 30%, which is very nice if you're using the hero for utility, um, because you might not be able to also stick on an ice damage weapon, and the weapon itself is not. Uh, but it is 540% and same R abilities. And then if we look back at Zack's weapon, Pressure Ridge. Same R abilities, uh, but this is ice damage and it's bigger. So I would say this weapon is better. The duration's also a little bit higher and it has a sigil break. So it's, in terms of power creep, yeah, this weapon is probably just simply better than, uh, than Bald Eagle. Actually, even as a sub weapon, it's a little bit less good. But only a little bit. The R ability is still the same. But if we look here, uh, we're looking at 630 and 477. We don't typically care about the heal on a weapon like this because you're usually going to be putting it on a damage dealer. So 633, 477. And then if we come back to this, we see 660, 492. So even the base stats are better. And again, that's the power creep. That's what we're talking about, which honestly, I, this kind of power creep, I am perfectly okay with because Lucia's Bald Eagle came out at the same time as Sephiroth's weapon, uh, the Edged Wings. So, and that was like, I don't even know, in the second month of the game, I think, something around there. And so, you know, having this, I, I would expect this, you know, this has been five months. The buff extension stuff, I mean... <laughs> We just got that when uh, Yuffie came out. So, you know, it's been half the amount of time and they're already creeping it. But like I said, I shared my thoughts on that. I'd like to hear your thoughts, whether or not you're pulling on this banner. If you're just, you know, kind of exhausted at this point or, you know, don't have the crystals. That's fine, too. I think ultimately this banner is perfectly skippable. If you don't have them, I wouldn't feel like I was missing out on too much. Subscribe for future content if you're not already. If you are, I appreciate each and every one of your support. And as always, thanks for watching.